I'm Carmen, and this is Cooking with Carmen Live. Welcome back to our seventh episode. I'm back at Operation Food Search in the Bayer Healthy Community Kitchen. As part of our mission to heal hunger, Operation Food Search teaches families how to cook delicious food on a budget. Today's episode is all about summer snacking. Um, now that the warm weather is here and kids are done with school, summer feels like it's really here. Many think about swimming pool, think about summer break. But here at Operation Food Search, the reality is different. Every summer, too many children have to worry about where they will get their next meal. Summer break means kids miss 10 meals a week, meals that they would normally receive at school. This summer is even more challenging, so we'll take new solutions and additional resources. At Operation Food Search, we're tackling summer hunger with an innovative approach. So we have an adapted service that focuses on rural partnerships, drop and go meal sites, drive through distribution events, and mobile meal routes. We're planning to serve 300,000 meals this year, more than three times what we served last year. For more information on our summer meals program and where to find free summer meals for kids, check out our website at operationfoodsearch.org. So with kids home from school all day, snacking is often at the forefront of their minds. And let's be honest, it's in my mind too. So today I'll be showcasing three simple and healthy snack ideas that kids can prepare with minimal help and that the whole family can enjoy together. But first, snacking is one of those behaviors that's surrounded by confusion. So what kind of food should we snack on? What times should we snack? Should we even snack at all? First and foremost, snacking is okay. Many people feel guilty when they grab a snack because they think that snacking will cause them to gain weight. Uh, but in reality, snacking is okay. It can actually help you live and maintain a healthy lifestyle. So say goodbye to the mindset of only three meals a day because the human body is constantly burning calories uh, and constantly needs fuel. So the core of healthy snacking is simply paying attention to when and what you're eating at snack time. So first, what should you eat? Fueling the body is a matter of timing. So if you wait too long between meals, you may overeat at the next meal because you're so hungry. Ideally, you, shouldn't feel your, you should feel your body every three to four hours during your waking hours. So in addition to avoiding that feeling of intense hunger, snacking appropriately can also keep your energy up throughout the day so you avoid that afternoon slump. So to find the best time to have a snack, take a look at when you normally eat your meals and add in a snack with the longest break. So for me, I plan on having a snack in the afternoon, which tends to be the longest break between meals. So I might eat lunch around noon and dinner at 6 p.m. or later. So six hours is too long to go without eating for me. So I like to have that afternoon snack to boost my energy. There is a common misconception that late night snacking in particular causes weight gain. I often hear people say, never eat after 7 p.m. When in reality, it's not the time of day that matters. It's what and how much you eat throughout the entire day that matters. So as long as your meals and snacks are well balanced and spaced, again, at three to four hours apart, does not necessarily matter what time of day you're eating. So I have an eight-month-old eight at home, and sometimes I don't eat dinner until after he goes to bed, which can be 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night. And that's okay, because if you find yourself snacking in the evening, but out of boredom and not hunger, um, try closing your kitchen. Brush your teeth after dinner can help you um, avoiding snacking or grazing throughout the evening. So next, what should you be eating? So it's important to remember that a snack is not a fourth meal, so it should be smaller than a meal. A snack is something to keep you from getting too hungry in between meals, and planning out your snacks for the week can help prevent you from reaching for candy or other processed foods. So having a snack with two food groups, such as a carbohydrate, which could be a fruit or a grain product, or and adding in a protein or a dairy product can help keep you full longer versus if you just had a piece of fruit or a grain product. Also, adding in vegetables can add in beneficial fiber and nutrients and add a lot more volume to your snack without making it too calorie dense. So some of my quick go-to snacks are grapes and cheese, because again, it's that carbs and protein or dairy combination, yogurt with some fresh fruit, apples and peanut butter, veggies and hummus, and even like a homemade trail mix for like a shelf-stable snack. So keeping pre-chopped fruits and veggies in the fridge help, helps me stick to healthier snack options at snack time because everything's prepped and ready to go. So find out what works for you, and let us know in the comments what are some of your favorite snack ideas. So now we're gonna get cooking. So the first recipe is something that we fondly call Fiesta Dip. So Fiesta Dip is one of our staple for our kids' cooking classes. So it's a very fun and easy recipe. Um, it's packed full of those good for you foods like beans and spinach, 
and it's all in a very kid-friendly format, which is a taco dip. So first, I like to gather my ingredients. So we have a can of black beans here, and I've drained and rinsed them into this bowl. We also have a can of chicken, and we have a cup of salsa. We have three cups of spinach, but you can use fresh or canned as well, or fresh, frozen, or canned. We have a cup of cheese and taco seasoning. So simply, all we do is dump all of those ingredients into our bowl. So again, I have my beans here that I drained and rinsed. So rinsing helps to remove some of that extra salt from the outside. And then we simply dump in the rest of the ingredients. So for kids, this is a great opportunity for them just to make it by themselves. If they're not comfortable with a can opener, you can help them with the can of chicken. But you can also make this without chicken. It could just be a bean dip with all, all the other ingredients. So we have our chicken and our beans in here. Now we have in our cup of salsa, adds in a lot of great flavor. Um, and it's tomatoes, so it's another veggie that we're putting in here. And then we have our three cups of fresh spinach. But again, like I mentioned, you can use fresh, frozen, or canned. Huh, maybe this bowl is not big enough, so I'm gonna take some of the spinach out. And I will add it to the skillet. Gotta imp improvise on the fly. So we're going to start mixing this up a little before I add the other ingredients because some of the, um, when you use canned chicken, the chunks can be a little large. So they are very tender. So just using your spoon can kind of break them up and you just want to stir it in so it's all kind of mixed together. All right. And then we have our cup of cheese and you can really use any cheese. I have cheddar here, but pepper jack could add some more kick to it. Um, mozzarella cheese works, Swiss cheese, really anything that you have. But cheese really makes this, that taco dip, it makes it... Um, Definitely kid friendly, because who doesn't like cheese in their dip? Make it all nice and cheesy. And then last we have our taco seasoning. So you can make your own taco seasoning, which I did today. So it's a tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and then a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of black pepper. And that's a very easy taco seasoning. So you can kind of make a larger batch of it and keep it in like a, a little glass jar, Tupperware container. For taco nights. But you're also welcome to use pre-made taco seasoning. All right, so we have this mixed up, and now there are three ways to heat it up. So you can either heat it up in the stove top like we're doing today, we can also heat it in the oven. So for the oven, you just preheat it to 350 degrees. You put this in um, like a casserole dish, and you bake it for about 20-25 minutes or until it's like bubbly and melty. And then the most kid-friendly way could be microwaving it. So um, to microwave it, you simply keep it in like a glass bowl like this or a, a microwave safe bowl. And you microwave it in two to three minute increments, again, until it is heated through, the cheese is melted, and the spinach kind of melts and wilts throughout here. But I'm gonna do the skillet method today. So I'm just gonna preheat my skillet, turn it on. Um, I have it on about like medium heat, so it's not too hot. And then all we do is dump in our taco dip. The whole thing and then this is where I'm gonna add in the rest of that spinach so it might look like a lot of spinach but again when you cook spinach it really shrinks down um, and it will just totally disappear so we're gonna add in a whole um, cup of spit or a whole three cups of spinach into our skillet here and we're just gonna stir it up and then this will take like a few minutes to kind of melt and get stuck together. So I'm going to move on to the next recipe um, while this is simmering away. So let me clean up just a little bit. So I'm going to take my bowl, put it off to the side here. And our next recipe is our no-bake trail mix bites. So again, this is another kid-friendly recipe that they can completely make by themselves. So it's simply dumping in ingredients in a bowl and mixing it all together. So let me grab those ingredients. All right, so we have our trail mix bite ingredients. Gotta get a bowl here too. So our trail mix bite ingredients, um, we have a cup of oats, a fourth a cup of, I'm using sunflower butter today, but you can use peanut butter, almond butter, soy butter, anything that you have, a third a cup of honey, and then a half a cup of add-ins. So really you can choose any add-ins that you like. Today I have sunflower seeds, cranberries, and coconut flakes. So this is another one of those great simply dump and stir kind of ingredients. I'm gonna wear some gloves because um, we are gonna get a little hands-on with this. Um, and it's just so I don't have to disappear and wash my hands. 
but kids probably would love to either wear gloves or not to wear gloves, um, but it's a little sticky and messy, and that's the fun part. All right, so again, we simply dump in all of our ingredients. My gloves match my shirt. We got a cup of oats here. We have a fourth a cup of, um, I'm using sunflower butter. But really, any nut butter works. And then we have our third cup of honey. You can also use maple syrup here or pancake syrup. You just want something like sticky and slightly sweet, so get everything stuck together. Scoop all that up. And then I like to kind of get this started to mix together. And I'm using a spatula today, but you can just use a regular spoon. I find that a spatula helps because the, the sun butter or the nut butter, whatever butter you're using, tends to kind of stay in its lump. So I like to just kind of mash it, kind of get all the oats stuck together. All right, and we're gonna add in our add-in. So again, I'm using coconut, dried cranberries, and sunflower seeds. That really makes it like a trail mix. So you can use like chopped up peanuts or almonds or walnuts, other dry fruit like raisins, um, and different seasonings. So there's a couple of fun flavor combinations that we like to do in our kids' classes. So one is what we call monster cookie. So you can use like the mini M&Ms, chopped pretzels, that's a little sweet and salty, and then some dried fruit and kind of makes it like a monster cookie. You can also make this kind of like a chocolate, like a double chocolate kind of energy bite. So add in some cocoa powder into the mix and also some chocolate chips. So then you have double chocolate. This is where you can get creative and fun um, and kids can kind of choose the flavors that they want to try. Even if they sound a little wonky, um, it's time to get creative. So then we simply take about a tablespoon size into the palm of our hand and squeeze it together so it kind of sticks together. And then we roll it into a ball shape, like that. Then we just put it on a plate, and I keep these in the fridge for a few days. Um, but you can also freeze them for up to a month in the freezer. So keep it like in an airtight container in the freezer, and it'll keep up to a month. So typically it doesn't last that long in my house, but um, that is a way to have an easy snack to kind of pull out. All right, so those are the trail mix bites. Let me take off my gloves, it's very sticky. I'll set this off to the side. And our last recipe today is the fruit pizza. Let me grab the ingredients. All right, we have our fruit pizza. Gotta get our bowls here. All right, so fruit pizza, you might think of like the sugar cookie crust when you think of fruit pizza, but this is a very fast fruit pizza. So we're actually gonna use graham crackers for the crust. We're gonna make our own kind of uh, cream cheese and yogurt frosting. So instead of the normal um, sugary, sticky frosting that you think of with fruit pizza, we're making our own healthy version. So gathering our ingredients, we have half a cup of cream cheese, half a cup of yogurt, and I have vanilla yogurt here. You can use really any flavor of yogurt or even plain yogurt to add a little bit of honey to the mixture. We have some orange juice, which adds like a nice flavor, and some vanilla extract, and that's for our frosting. And then we have graham crackers and mixed fruit. So we'll go ahead and get started on making our frosting. So I have my cream cheese right there. And then we have the vanilla yogurt. I'm actually using Greek yogurt today. It's a little thicker, has a little more protein than regular yogurt. I actually like the texture of Greek yogurt. Um, that's my preference. But um, interestingly, Greek yogurt has a little less calcium than regular yogurt. So it's kind of give or take in what you prefer. So we mix this up, just kind of try to get some of like the big lumps of the cream cheese out of there. And we're gonna add in our vanilla. And that's a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And that kind of gives it that vanilla frosting flavor. But again, I'm also using vanilla yogurt. So it is adding some nice vanilla flavor there too. And the last is a little bit of orange juice. So that's a teaspoon of orange juice. So if you have like a jug of orange juice in your fridge, you can use that. But today we actually had a fresh orange, so we squeeze that into um, our own kind of orange juice. All right, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. But again, this is a great way for kids to kind of mix them together. And then the fun part is decorating the pizza. 
So we have our graham crackers here. Just take a butter knife and take on some of our frosting. We smear it on there. Again, the butter knife, not very sharp. You can also use like a plastic knife to spread this on because you don't really need it to be sharp. You just want it to um, be able to spread it on, kind of like frosting. So we have our frosting. And then now I get to decorate. So I have some strawberries and blueberries and canned pineapple. You can use any fruit that you have. And this is the fun part because you can kind of make little decorations with it. So I'm going to make like a little modern art on my fruit pizza. Or you can make silly faces like if you have um, like pineapple rings or you can cut like orange into like circle slices. Um, and again, you can give the plastic knives to the kids and they can like chop the fruit themselves. So the plastic knife can still cut through like a strawberry. Um, so I'm gonna use some canned pineapple. I'm gonna make a little, ooh, maybe I'll make a little colorful spread here. Put some blueberries on each corner. You can get really creative, it's fun. So again, like kids can make these um, snacks and feed them to everybody. So they can either make it for themselves, but um, encourage them to make them for you as well so you can enjoy. So we're gonna wrap up today's episode with a fun summer craft idea. If you have an empty milk or juice carton lying around, uh, we have a fun activity for the kids. So Claire is one of Operation Food Crew's nutrition educators, and she's gonna show you how to make this simple craft. So over to you. Thanks, Carmen. So like us, birds need snacks too. So I'm gonna show you guys a really fun way to make your own homemade bird feeder at home. And what you're gonna need for this is just some common ingredients you probably already have around at your house. So for this homemade bird feeder, you're going to need a milk carton. You can use a juice or milk. You can use paper or plastic as well. Um, you're going to need some scissors or something like an X-Acto knife. You're going to need like a six or an eight inch twig or stick. You can also use a popsicle stick for our perch. Some decoration supplies. So I have some, some plastic gems or stickers, even just markers. We decorated ours with some paint as well if you have that hanging around. Some glue. And then we also had some tiny sticks or twigs that we glued on to the top of our milk carton to kind of make a cute little roof. But once again, that's also optional. You're going to need string or twine to hang your bird feeder. And finally, you're gonna need some bird seeds. So we picked up this bird seed at a local nursery or even a hardware store, but you can make your own bird seed at home. The important thing to mention when making your own homemade bird seed is that you wanna choose unsalted and unroasted or raw um, wheat berries, millet, or even like sunflower seeds. So you can make your own mix, just making sure that they're completely unsalted and raw. So to get started, what you're going to need is have an empty milk carton and the thing about this, you should empty it and then clean and dry it. We want to make sure it's completely dry before we get started. And then the next thing you can do is have an adult is actually going to cut a two inch square, a couple inches up on one side of your bird feeder. So let's do that. So I'm going to use this exacto knife. Like I said, you can also use a pair of scissors and an adult, they should do this part. So we're going to cut that little square out. And we want to make sure that our square is a couple inches up from the bottom of our milk carton to make sure that we have enough room to even fill up our milk carton. And also you want to make sure you have enough room for a little perch for your bird to sit on. So after I made that two inch hole, I'm also going to uh, put a little hole right about an inch below that um, two inch square I made. And then another one right at the top about opposite from your pore spout. That's gonna allow for us to string our bird feeder so we can hang it on a tree branch outside. So once you've made your cuts in your bird feeder, this would be the time to get your kids to decorate it or even adults, you can decorate it too. We had a lot of fun decorating ours. Our dietetic intern, Lena, made this a really adorable bird feeder. She just painted this with some blue paint. And then we used some of these plastic gems um, and we glued them onto it. And like I said, she also used, used some small twigs from the outside that she just cut up and glued on as a little roof. So super cute, get creative. Um, if you don't have any of that hanging around, you can definitely just leave it undecorated. Or if you've got some stickers or crayons or markers, you can do that as well. So for our little perch, 
we're going to take that hole and you can kind of open the hole up a little bit. That's about an inch below your two inch hole. And that's where you're going to take about a six or eight inch twig from the outside. And like I said, you can also use a popsicle stick. And this is going to be for our perch. So we can stick that in. And the important thing about this is that you actually kind of want to glue it in there. Um, and that just helps it stay secure so your little birdie doesn't go flying off. <laughs> um, so once you have your perch in there, like the string, so I just stump, uh, strung a string through that small hole I made at the top and then threaded it through the pore spout. And that just gives you a little bit more stability um, with your bird feeder. So if it's hanging from a tree branch and maybe a strong wind comes or even somebody like a pesky squirrel comes by, it's less likely to break off your bird feeder. Now, the last thing all you have to do is just fill it with your bird seed. So I'm just going to use our store bought bird seed and pour it in. And you can fill it as high as the top, the bottom of your two inch square that you created. And that is your homemade bird feeder. So what you can do is you can hang this on a tree branch outside, um, or you can even just set it on a windowsill. Make sure it's somewhere where you can watch and kind of see all the neighborhood animals come and visit your bird feeder and watch out for those pesky squirrels because they will love your bird seed. So you guys make this at home. That is so cute. Thank you so much for showing us that super cute craft. I love that it can be decorated with just about anything. It's a perfect way to get, to get the creative juices flowing. All right, so now we're going to wrap up. So we have our fiesta dip here. You can see that the spinach is definitely shrunk down. The cheese is all nice and melty. And I really wish you guys could smell this because it definitely smells like a taco party in here. So I'm just going to put it in our bowl here. We've got some tortilla chips. But I also love to serve this fiesta dip with raw veggies. It's like carrot sticks, celery sticks, bell pepper sticks. Those are all delicious with our taco dip. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or made any of today's recipes or even that super cute bird feeder, please leave us a comment below. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And remember to like our page if you haven't already. And uh, visit our website to learn more about our work and see how we nourish and educate our neighbors in need to heal the hurt of hunger. So I'll see you in two weeks for our next episode. Stay healthy.